know this puller here spent 80 bucks on that sucker alright having no knowledge of what I'm doing I watched a couple videos on YouTube so I had a bad wheel bearing on my axle so the price from the dealer to uh, change those out was over a thousand dollars and that was just for one side so I went to YouTube learned how to take them out unfortunately there's no videos on how to put these things back in on YouTube so I thought I'd start mine backwards anyway there's a race in here it's known as a collar Right. Supposedly, these things come off this easy when they aren't rusted on. The brake shoe. You know, if this pin here or this shoe falls out while you're gone, doing your parts run, just take out the pin and it'll come back flat again. And then I'm back. This thing here comes out. It's going to be attached to the new one right there. You wouldn't believe it on this side. This was the hardest thing to get out of there. I actually couldn't get the rotors separated from the uh, shafts. So I was tugging on the rotor, pulled out the whole drive shaft. Didn't even need this puller. On the other side, I did need a puller. It took maybe three hits with the puller and the thing popped out. Alright, so I took these to my local Napa, which out here, they have a press, a machine shop. They press these down, part of that 200 bucks you saw was for them to put on new ones and to press it on. So they've done that for me. Now it's a matter of putting that back in there, putting back on the brake, putting on some bolts, checking the book for some torques. All the YouTube videos are going to show them cutting this off with a grinding wheel. That's what usually takes place when you read the book. It's going to say to uh, drill through this part don't hit the axle and then smack it with the chisel till it breaks apart and then cut through the other one but uh, you know the one YouTube I saw was from a dealership that uh, guy used a cutoff tool to go through both of those anyways that's that um, if you go to there both my transmissions are in neutral. Just going to give one last look at this to see if anything's different. Let's put that back on there the way it was. I'm just going to slide my axle in. Oh yeah. I need to put back on a my bolts for the uh, hold the tires on. Alright, so all I'm doing is sliding these guys back in, lining up the thread marks, and then just hitting them with the hammer the rest of the way in. Alright, you got one end with the cutout. Just to turn on some lights here. One end with the cutout there. It's going to line up with this guy here, slide him back in. Maybe five or two minutes of bouncing this guy around. Bolts. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do a full story on this side. I decide we're kind of slow. The only scary part is I have no idea what I'm doing. Not a chance. It looked okay to me. It's something like warning. 
Insanity has replaced all reason in the modification of this Jeep. Alright, so how about this one? These drive shafts aren't the same size. I already put the one in the driver's side. It's nighttime out there. I've been working on this one ever since. Tried to look it up in the book, there was nothing about it in there. Found a website that actually has part numbers for old Jeep. Had different part numbers for this drive or at this axle and that axle. I read a website about Jeeps that um said only the Rubicons had different size axle shafts in their Dana 44s. Everybody else had the same size. I played with this axle trying to get this one to fit in here or the other one to fit in here until it got dark outside guys. Here's the deal. On mine, driver's side is 31 inches, the passenger side is 30 inches. Think about this as the book kept saying, just shove the drive shaft in, or shove the axle in. Kind of like there was nothing to it. And when you put the right size in the right side, they really do just slide right in. You don't have to worry about too much. So, I pulled the drive shaft on the other side. Well, this side, well, this side never made it in because it was the wrong side. But the other side was too short to be on that side. Got them both out, measured them, switched drive shafts. You know, this job that took me till all night could have been fixed a long time ago if I just would have remembered which drive shaft came out of there, which side. And to make it work, Somebody wrote a big giant three on this drive shaft. It's even a three there. I really thought that three on the drive shaft came from the driver's side. But I was wrong. I always try to make notes. Because if you don't, you kind of get screwed. So they go in really easy once you put the right ones on the right side. When you get it there, don't let it go. Ball snaps your brake line. Nobody be happy. Alright. The back side of this, you got these two huge bolts. I took them up to 85 because they were brakes. Let me go check the book, make sure I didn't blow that torque. I'm going to tighten them up a couple times to make sure they're all the way pulled through on that retainer plate. But from here, I'm going to put the tires back on.